I'm Cappy from Always in Stitches, and I want to share with you a little bit about this HQ Stitch 210 machine. Um, we've sold several of these, and we thought it might be helpful to have a video that explains some of the basic operations. Um, the good news is, if I show you how to use this machine, chances are it might help with your machine too, because basically the mechanical parts of sewing machines has not changed in over 150 years, so all the inner workings pretty much work the same. But when you get a new machine, there's always all these questions about how do I thread it? Where does the bobbin go? How do I um, properly set the tension? Things like that. So I'm going to go through the basics of the machine so you can um, hopefully run your machine and come out with very successful projects. So Peter's behind the camera today, so hands up for Peter for doing this. But let me just show you some features on this machine to start with. Um, this machine has several things that make it super, super simple to use. First of all, you have a speed governor. And what this does is if it's over here with one arrow, that's only one arrow fast, two arrow, three arrows. So the farther I slide this in one direction or the other, it's gonna make the machine go faster or slower, slower or faster. That's gonna be based on the way the foot pedal is set. So if I have a foot pedal plugged in, which on the end of the machine here, there's a couple things. First, your on-off button. On and off. This is the power cord plugs in right here to this port here that plugs into the wall. And then this is where I can plug in my foot pedal. And it just attaches right like this. Foot pedal plugged in. But this machine has a great feature that means I don't have to use the foot pedal. And that's this little stop-start button right here. And I love the stop start button. I started sewing with a stop start button and found that it's so much easier. I don't find myself sitting, um, searching for that pedal with my foot. And it allows me to sit a little straighter and sew a little longer, which is always a goal to sew more than I can. So that's how I get the power up. That's how I can plug in the foot pedal. If the foot pedal's plugged in, your stop start button is not going to function. It only uses one or the other. Um, but whatever speed you had it set at, the foot pedal, if I push the foot pedal to the floor and this is on slow, it won't go any faster than what this is set at. So this, this helps govern the foot pedal as well as this, how far you push the foot pedal down. So the first thing I'm going to want to do with my machine is I'm going to thread it. Now we recommend always use a good quality thread. This is an Aurifil thread. Um, and what I like about Aurifil thread is it tells me the weight, it tells me the um, how many, uh, how many yards are on the thread. It also gives me the color. Um, it gives me a lot of information that when I'm sewing, I make sure my thread matches my project and my thread matches my needle. So it's thread, needle, tension. Thread needs to match the needle and tension needs to match the thread. So it's a three-step process. So what happens sometimes with this Aurifil thread, see how this is kind of wonky and I'm kind of, the beginning is hard to find. So let me show you a little trick. This end right here, pulls off. And now I can find my beginning thread and get it straightened out. That little piece is just a little extra that needs to go underneath and I can put that right back in the thread now. And I'm ready to go. So that's how I keep my thread from being backwards. Then this one has a sp two different places to put my thread. I can place it here if I'm going to fill a bobbin or I place it on the back side if I'm going to fill, um, do the needle. So for this point right now, I'm first going to fill a bobbin because whenever I start a project, I always fill my bobbin at least two or three bobbins. This machine comes with four empty bobbins and bobbins are proprietary. In that I mean you want to buy the bobbin that goes with your machine. So this is the machine bobbin that is to be used in a handy quilter machine. Um, we can sell bobbins to you. We have them pre-filled as well as um, just plain. So it's kind of nice that you can do them that way. Um, so this is the tension disc. So right here is a little tension disc. See that right there? And this is like flossing your teeth. You want to be sure you go through that tension disc because if you don't, your bobbin isn't going to fill correctly. Now, there's also a little hole on the side of the bobbin that you can push the thread up through. If it's helpful to you to push that up through that hole, and then hold that when you put it on the bobbin, you can. I have a different technique because I don't like that thread sticking out the top. So I'm gonna wrap my thread around a few times and come back and hold it right here. 
And then in order to engage the bobbin, used to be we pulled out the hand wheel, but with this machine, I just pushed the bobbin over. And you can hear it make a little beep. And it says on here, SP, that means spool. It's spooling a bobbin is what the SP stands for. We get several phone calls. They'll say, my machine won't sew. It has 5P in it. What's wrong with my machine? It won't sew. And I'll say, well, just reach up there and push your bobbin motor back over to the other side. And it sews every time. But commonly that happens. So right now, just push it over to there. I've got a hold of this thread, and I'm going to push the start button. And she starts spinning. Now, this is set at the slowest speed. I can fill the bobbin super fast, but I don't get a nice even fill. So I always recommend to go at least slow to medium on your speed. You don't have to fill a bobbin super fast. <clears throat> but to start, I always start with, oops, and see there's a mistake. There's what happens. It came out of the tension disc. So see how it got full? This is perfect. Look how that got on there. I don't want that. I got to take all of that off of there. Okay. So we're going to stop filling the bobbin at that point. There's a thread cutter on the side. So I'm just gonna cut off all this excess thread. But if you look at this bobbin, see how firm that is? See, it's nice and tight. It's not necessarily even, but it is tight. And that's the important part. I can push the thread up and down to make it more even if I need to. So always start out with at least two bobbins off of any spool of thread. With the Orifil thread, I know it's gonna last so long that I can fill two or three bobbins when I get a new spool and just keep them with it when I'm ready to start the next project. I just pop another bobbin in. So let's start with threading the machine. Um, I could spool from here if I have threads that are um, wound in such a way, like this one might be one that would work well to go like, to be upright. Um, the ones that the thread is evenly around and not crisscrossed, this upright post doesn't work so well. Then you want to go to the horizontal post. But for this situation, I'm going to go ahead and put it on the horizontal post so you can see how it attaches. So I'm going to put my thread here, and then there's the big debate about over or under. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter as much as your thread is secure is the main thing. So this spool cap has two sides, a flat side and a pointed side. Because of the type of thread this is, I want to put it in this way so that that's nice and tight because what I don't want is this spool of thread wobbling around. I want that spool of thread to stay secure. So when the thread comes off, if you can see the thread, it just spools off. And then I'm going to follow the directions. It has me go here for one, right up here, down here for two, and I put a little tension on the top of the thread so that it, I can feel it kind of pulling through. And I go up here for three, go through this little take-up lever, back down, and next to the needle is another one right here. And then this has a needle threader. Needle threaders are awesome, providing you know how to use them. So to get this position correctly, I'm going to push this button right here, which is the needle up and down. I'm going to push that down, push that up. So now I know my needle is exactly in the right spot. And I take the needle threader down like this and engage it with the needle. So I want you to think of it like a gate, like a swinging gate. So this comes down and the gate is open, but I need to close that gate for the needle to catch the thread. So then I take the thread and go from the left side so that it's over that little loop right here. And I go in front of the needle and I can feel that thread get caught by a little wire that's coming through the eye of the needle right now. And it's super tiny, it's hard to see. But if you can imagine, it's a, it's a wire thin enough to go through the eye of a needle. And I simply then release the gate and kind of let it go back up. And now you can see I have a loop on the back of the sewing of the needle that I can just pull that loop and I've threaded my needle. So it makes a super, super nice thread. That's one of the things that we spend the most time teaching people how to use. <laughs> the next part we're going to do, once we have the needle threaded, is we're going to replace the bobbin. So here's the empty bobbin that came in the machine, just like the other. And I want to take my thread so that my bobbin, the thread is coming off the left side of the top. So it looks like the letter not, or the number nine. No, it looks like the letter P, sorry. 
not the number nine, the letter P. So the thread looks like this is the top and there's the stick of the P coming down. There's actually a diagram on the lid for the bobbin that shows you that, so that the thread's coming off the left side over the top. I'm gonna drop that bobbin right down in the hole and there's a tension disc right here that I needed to catch and there's one up here. So I go up like this and it's caught both tension discs. Now, just like the picture shows, I'm gonna leave this thread just sticking out because there's a little gap right here that allows that thread to stick out the top. So my thread is on the top sticking out, but the lid is on the bobbin. Then I'm gonna take my, this is our old home act trick, I'm gonna take my needle thread, I'm gonna hold it, and I'm gonna use my needle up and down button. So here's my needle up and down. I'm gonna push it once, puts the needle down, push it again, pulls the needle up. And that pulled up my bobbin thread. See, right there's my bobbin thread. So now I have both threads together. I'm gonna to pull them through the foot and to the back. Then my thread cutter, which is up here on the side, I'm gonna just cut the thread. So now I have a nice length and I don't have all this extra thread hanging around. So now I've threaded the needle, ready to go, ready to sew. The other things you're gonna to wanna to look at now is how to adjust the needle position, the stitch length, and to choose your stitches. So over here you have this little LED window and it says zero 01. That means I'm in stitch zero 01 right now. So it's just a straight stitch. If I push this button, it tells me that the needle is right smack dab in the middle, 2.5. This is a five millimeter opening. So 2.5 is exactly the middle. And I'm gonna push this button, and now Peter, watch the LED number. Let me change it a little bit. So see how the number's changing. Okay, now I'm gonna go back down to 2.5. Now watch the needle when I move that number. So the needle moves just the littlest bit. And now when she gets to the end, here go beep, 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 she's saying I can't move anymore. So I can move that needle to the left or to the right, depending on what I wanna sew. And that's how I move my needle position. That's also, if you're doing a zigzag, how you're going to change the stitch um, width, not the length, but the stitch width if I was doing a zigzag. So I'm gonna go back to 2.5 because that's the middle. And then if I wanna change the stitch length, and you can see the reason I know I'm changing stitch length or stitch width is because this is lit. See how that little light is on? That tells me I'm in stitch width. Light there, that tells me I'm using this screen. Stitch length, which is this button, now see how this long went up? This is 2.2 millimeters. Again, I can change my stitch length. So I can go up to 4.0, which is a kind of a top stitch length. If I was doing paper piecing, I'd be down around 1.5, 1.8 in there, fairly small. So this is what changes my stitch length. So we have width, we have length. And then these are what are called your quick set buttons. So. This machine has 20 stitches. If I want to quickly go to stitch 12, I can push 11. And now, if I want to go to the next one, I just push 11 again, and it gives me stitch 12. 13, 14, 15, 16. Or it goes back to 11, because 16 then starts the next stitch. So these are, these are buttons that help you choose. If I want these four, I'm gonna use stitch one. So give me one, two, and every time I hit it, it picks the next stitch. If I wanna pick these four stitches, I'm gonna start with st stitch six and hit those till I get to stitch 10, and then it goes back to six. 11 gives me all 11 through 14, 15, which are buttonholes, I'll show you those in a minute, and back to 11, or this goes 16 through 20. Now, any one of those stitches can be adjusted, the stitch width and the stitch length. If you notice, some of these are decorative stitches, so the machine's gonna lock out. It's not gonna let me adjust or change a decorative stitch so that it will distort it to the way that it won't function. So your decorative stitches will have a lockout, and you'll hear it go beep, 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 beep. That just is a time where the machine's a little smarter than we are because sometimes she knows what it can do and what it can't. So if you hear that beep, 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 it just means, okay, wait a minute, you're not doing something the way that the machine's designed to do. So let's go back to stitch one, which is basically just your straight stitch. In order to do just a basic straight stitch, I'm gonna put my fabric in the machine. 
I'm gonna put the presser foot down. There's a lever right here at the back to drop the presser foot. It's just a black leather lever. And I'm using the stop start button. So I'm set at medium speed, straight stitch in the middle. I can check my stitch length is 2.2, but if I wanna make it bigger, I can. I'm gonna stay with where it's at and I'm gonna push the start button and the machine starts sewing. She's kind of quiet, as you notice, she doesn't make much noise. She's small, she's a three quarter size machine. It's a great to take to class machine. Now, if I wanna stop sewing, I'm gonna push this bullseye button right here. What that does is that locks my stitch. So you saw it continue to sew even though I pushed the lock button. And I take my fabric out, and I run it through the cutter, and there I have this nice, even 2.2 millimeter stitch. And you can see on the back there's a little lock, and there's a little lock there, because when I started the stitch, I locked it. So there you have, that's the straight stitch. Now, this is a 2.2 length. If I wanted to change the stitch length to bigger, let's go to a 4.0 stitch length and see what she looks like next to the other. You're gonna see this is a much longer stitch. Again, this time I'm just gonna push the stop button and it just stopped sewing, it didn't lock it. Now you can see the stitch length on this is considerably longer than this one. And I might wanna use that for a basting stitch or maybe for top stitching. So that's how I adjust my stitch length. Then I can choose all the different stitches to do different decorations. I encourage anybody who buys a new machine to go through all the stitches. Get a sheet of fabric that's just a solid color and get a contrasting thread and go through and sew every single stitch. This machine primarily uses this particular foot for all the stitches. But let me show you the little secret compartment in this machine. So this comes off to allow me to have what's called a free arm. So if I'm working on a sleeve, I can push that onto this free arm and I can now sew all the way around the sleeve without trying to get inside or outside. Free arms are great to have and they're really helpful if you do much garment. But the nice thing about it is I have a little hidey hole right here where I can hide some of my goodies. So this machine uses the Organ brand needles. Organ is a Japanese company that's made needles for a long, long time. So these come with the machine. There's a little package of three needles, but I also can use the Janome needles in it. And I would suggest getting a selection of, of assorted needles, a 9, 11, a 14, 16. Based on the size fabric and thread you're using, you're going to change your needle size, okay? And let me show you real quick while we're here how to change a needle. So there's a thumb screw right here and that just lifts the needle out. And I choose the selection of the needle I wanna use for the garment or the whatever I'm sewing. I'm gonna use a 16, which is a really heavy needle. And here's what's cool. This is how I don't waste my old needle. I take and seat that new needle, and put the presser foot down, makes it a little easier to reach. Push that new needle into that hole, and then I take the point of my old needle and put it in the eye of the new needle and use that to push that needle up. And that holds my needle in place while I tighten the thumb screw. So I'm sure that that needle is all the way up where it needs to be. Because if it isn't all the way up in there, my tension's not gonna be right. So there she goes, up all the way. And now I tighten my thumb screw, just a little tight, and now my new needle's in place. The old needle, throw it away. Every new project deserves a new needle. So every eight hours of use, or if I'm sewing heavier fabrics, I might even change more often, but every project deserves a new needle. Package of needles is, I don't know, five bucks? Yeah, $5.99 for this package of needles. If you buy the machine with us, you're gonna get 20% off that retail price. For my investment in needles will save me a lot of money in service. So always change your needle. If you don't change your needle, it's like driving a car with dirty oil or doing the term paper that you did as a freshman with the same pencil when you're a senior. It doesn't work. So always replace your needles. Okay, so now we talked a little bit about needles. Um, the other things that come with your machine is this is a button foot. Um, you can put a button in here. I'm gonna pretend this bobbin is a button and it will size your button. So whatever size my button is, it's gonna sew that size. Then to take the feet off and change them, I lift the lever up, and on the back side, 
there's a little lever here. I push that. And you see the foot just dropped off. It's a spring. The other thing is all the feet always have a letter on them. And this may not show up very well on the camera, but there's a little R right there. So I need to be able to read the letter. So the letter faces me. And I put the foot on the machine just like this. There's a bar right there it's going to connect on. And there it's snapped onto the machine. Okay. Now, I've unthreaded my needle, so I'm gonna go ahead and re-thread my needle. So we'll do that again. Remember, we pull this down, we bring that forward to engage it into the needle, put the thread off the left side, and then in front of the needle through the hoop, and then I can feel it just pull right through there. And there's my loop on the back. Teeny tiny loop this time, but it's a loop. There she goes. All right, so that's how I thread my needle. Now, to do a buttonhole, I'm gonna choose these two buttons here. See, 14 and 15? So to get to those two stitches, I'm gonna choose 11, and I'm gonna choose 14. So I'm gonna hit this till the number says 14. Okay, now I'm ready to sew a button, but I have to get the microphone ready. What do you mean by microphone? Well, let me just show you what happens. With, um, the sewing machines that have the built-in buttonhole makers, you need to have the machine talk to it. So in the back here, oops, in the back right here, is a little lever. And see how it kind of looks like a microphone? You pull that down and make sure it comes in contact with that button foot right there. And what happens when this moves back and forth is this lever senses the area it's supposed to be sewing. So now when I run my button foot, first of all, you always want two or three layers too. You're not gonna sew a button onto just one layer of fabric. If you have to sew under just one layer, you need to put interfacing or something to support it. So now I'm gonna place my fabric underneath it. Well, and I'm gonna put a line. So if I was putting a buttonhole, let's say I want my buttonhole to be right here. And I would use this line, I would mark a line here and a line here, and that tells me how far I'm gonna sew my button. But this is gonna sew from the front to the back. I'm gonna slide my spot up there that I'm ready to do my buttonhole. I'm gonna drop my presser foot, and I'm gonna push the start button. Now, I'm not gonna do this like rabbit fast. I'm gonna stay about mid midway. And it sews the left side. It does a nice satin stitch. It's covering the thread that was in there before. And on the screen here, it has an L, so it tells me it's doing the left. And when it gets to the back of that, it's gonna stop. This is gonna be a pretty big button because of the way the bobbin sets it. Okay, it sensed the back of the hole, so now it's coming down and it's doing a, a, a stabilizing stitch on the right side. And now it's gonna go back and forth again and do the satin stitch. Now, I can go faster, let me just show you. When it gets to the top, it'll stop, and it'll finish that tack to finish it. There we go. Then when it gets to the end, it's gonna stop and lock the stitch. And she's done. So I pull this up, and if I'd have had scissors, I'd have trimmed that up a little better, but you can see there's my buttonhole. And if I had the button to put it in, here, you can see the hole actually does fit the width of this with a little extra so that it can slide through. So she knows how big to make the buttonhole when you put that in there. So that's your buttonhole foot, it comes with the machine. Many of us don't do buttonholes anymore because we're not doing garments, but I can tell you I've had to replace things and, and that's nice to, to have a buttonhole foot. The other foot that comes with this machine is the F foot and it's for doing decorative stitches. So there's an F inside there. I don't know if you can see it, but there is an F. And what happens with this is there's an open valley underneath the bottom of the foot. So when you look at this area right here, where the A foot is solid across the bottom, this is flat, this has an opening. And the reason that has an opening is so that the decorative stitches have room to process the, the thread through there. So same as I did before, I'm gonna lift this presser foot up and I'm gonna push it down in order to catch that little handlebar. And now if I do a decorative stitch, let's pick 
Uh, let's see, let's do stitch 20. So in order to pick stitch 20, I push the 16. It says 16, but I'm gonna keep pushing it now until it says stitch 20. I'm now in stitch 20. So to sew this decorative stitch, I put my fabric underneath. And again, whenever you're sewing decorative pieces or, or uh, more than one, just a straight stitch, you want some heft in there. So I've got three or four layer, I've got almost five layers there um, of fabric in order to support the sewing. So now I'm gonna drop this and I'm gonna let it sew. And this is one of the decorative stitches that comes on the machine. This, these are nice for, um, oh, you can put a little edge, you can use uh, multicolored thread and put an edge on a shirt or put the edge on a pair of pants, anything like that. When I get to get done sewing this, see I could, should have cut my thread, bad technique. Um, what I wanna do to stop sewing though is I'm gonna push the bullseye. Now it stitched a couple more stitches because it's finishing the design. That's what the bullseye does. It locks it and finishes the design. And then I'm gonna just cut it on my thread cutter. And there you can see the decorative design. Well, I've got a thread running through it because I didn't pull my thread out, but here we go, pull that right out. There you go. That's a pretty design. And it looks as good on the back as it does the front. That's the other thing, it can, can be done either way. But this makes a nice little edge on, the, on a shirt sleeve, or if you wanna do finish quilting and, and use this particular stitch, you can do it, make it look like a crazy quilt. That's a great way to use that. The other accessories that come with this machine are what I call the Mickey Mouse. This is, allows you to take the foot plate off of your machine. So this just goes right down in here. And this is just basically a screwdriver. And I'm trying to do it so my hands don't get in the way, but here, let's do it this way. So here you go. You're gonna take this and just put it down in the screw like that, and then this just unscrews it. So the reason I wanna do that is I wanna keep the area inside the bobbin case clean. So that area needs to be, um, Every time I change the bobbin, I wanna take off my foot plate and make sure that I've got no lint building up in my machine. Um, that's one of those things that's kind of a, a bad bad thing to have. So I, I always put this in a safe place where I know I'm not gonna lose that screw because believe me, I've lost more than one. I, there's kind of a hyper up so I can lift that presser foot like really high and then this little plate just comes right off. This is the mechanism of your machine. This is the rotary um, um, where the, the bobbin and thread come around and make the stitch, which is kind of a magical little thing. But this comes out and I wanna clean that out. Don't blow air into it. If you wanna take your vacuum cleaner and put over that and suck out, that's fine. Um, but blowing air into it just drives the fibers back into the machine and that it causes damage long-term. So I'm also gonna check my bobbin case holder to make sure that it's nice and clean, brush it out, wipe it off. If there's any nicks or cuts on there, it might be time to, re to uh, replace that. Um, but this just drops right back in and there's a nice little arrow right here. There's a teeny tiny arrow, you can just barely see it, right there. And I drop this in so that this arrow is right across from that screw. That's how I know it's in the right place. And you'll feel it kind of it sets down in there just like it's supposed to. And then I just put this plate back on, I put the screw back in, and I tighten it up. And that's how you clean the machine. Um, if you buy a machine with us, you do get an annual cleaning uh, that's free. Uh, once, once if it's under $1,000, you get three of those over three years if it's over $1,000. So the price point on this machine would allow you to get one cleaning. Um, you also can have more classes in the shop. If you feel like you need another class on this machine, this video is not the only thing that you'll get because we're always here and willing to help answer your questions. Um, the other thing that came with this machine that I didn't actually show you, but I sort of did, is the seam ripper. I rarely have to teach someone how to use a seam ripper. Pretty much everybody knows how. So you're gonna get the seam ripper, you're gonna get the, bot, the button foot, you're gonna get some needles, you're gonna get two different feet that you need, you're gonna get the, um, the Mickey Mouse um, screwdriver, then there's the posts to hold your threads, the foot pedal, um, and then there's four bobbins comes in this machine. So that's enough to get you started, but we do sell the bobbins if you wanna have more. Um, I think I've told you about everything you need to know about how to basically operate the machine. Um, it does come with a carry case, which is super nice if you're taking it to class. That's why I would buy this machine, 
She's three quarter size, so she's not quite as big as most machines, um, but she's perfect for piecing. We've actually run pleather through this and it takes it no problem. The instruction manual is really well written. It's got nice pictures. It explains everything in the machine and how to use it, all the accessories. Um, so if, if you can't watch the video or you still have a question, just like here, it shows you exactly how to put that foot on. So everything's in there that you need in case the descriptions we've given you don't help. But lots of ways to tell you how to use the machine. Um, and we're here. Anytime you buy a machine at Always and Stitches, you get our entire staff. We have over 21 people on staff. We have two machine technicians. We have two or three people who are specifically trained to work in the machine department. So it's at the end of the day, we are a good value for your investment. I'm so glad you bought a machine with us. If, uh, if you're watching this because you purchased a machine, hopefully this answered your questions. If it didn't, call us. We'd love to help. Our number is 317-776-4227. And enjoy your machine. Happy stitching.